of the more common retirement questions that financial advisors receive from their clients and prospects? Well, here to talk with me about that is Dana Osbaugh from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Hi, Bob. Glad to be here. Glad to have you here. We're working our way through the 10 most common retirement questions. We're on to number eight. It's a question that I'm really fond of. Is it smart to guarantee some of my retirement income by putting a portion of my funds into an income annuity? So this is a loaded question. Sometimes when we use the word annuity, people react as if we said a, a four-letter word. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's simply a tool. An annuity is a vehicle that does deliver guaranteed lifetime income. And we tend to think as consumers as everything in terms of an investment decision. Where can I get the highest rate of return? But when it comes to retirement planning, instead, you can look at things in terms of different risk buckets. And one of those risk buckets is living long. Now, we think of living long as a good thing. Most of us want a long life if we can be healthy and, and, and active. Yet, when it comes to your finances, it can pose an additional challenge. And annuities are one of the vehicles, tools, that are uniquely suited to meet that challenge, as is delaying the start date of your Social Security. So it has this unique function, but people tend to not want to, quote, give up control of their money. Now, I think it does make sense for people to evaluate the use of income annuities in retirement. We are behavioral creatures. We make decisions that aren't always logical. And many studies have looked at the impact of having guaranteed income in retirement, and people feel more secure. When you have a regular paycheck coming in, you feel more secure. That can often free you up to enjoy retirement a little more, to do things that maybe you would have been otherwise hesitant to do. And there is a lot of value in that. So you have to do the math and, and look at the numbers, but don't just blindly say, oh, no, 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 I would never buy an annuity. Uh, that would be the wrong decision. Doing the math, actually being open-minded, seeing the value that, that it could add to your financial plan, that always makes sense. Right. Uh, what about folks who might think about laddering their income annuities? Is that a strategy that is worth looking at? Yeah, I have talked about that uh, for over a decade, actually, in some of the online content that I've had, particularly because we had a decade where interest rates were really low. And so people were more hesitant to buy immediate annuities at that point. Now, as interest rates rise, it is likely you will see higher payouts that come from your annuity payments if you were to buy one today, for example, versus a year ago. And so when you're not sure where interest rates are going, one of the strategies was, well, let's say you wanted a, you know, a guaranteed income stream of 12000 a year, and so you might put X amount in an annuity today that was going to pay you 3000 a year, and then a year or two later, you would purchase the next 3000 and then a year later, the next 3000 and so you're staggering into those annuities. So kind of like dollar cost averaging, right? We, we talk about dollar cost averaging to average our way into the investments and be able to take advantage of low points in the stock market. Well, averaging your way into income annuities can even out the impact of, of the ups and, and downs in the interest rates. I do think we're going to have an opportunity with higher interest rates where people should take a fresh look at perhaps annuitizing a, a portion of their portfolio. I think those vehicles are, are going to look more attractive than perhaps they have looked in, in the last decade. And then in terms of identifying how much guaranteed income you might need, given you have a Social Security a benefit, maybe a defined benefit, and then maybe this outside income annuity, are you trying to match uh, the streams of those income to essential expenses or fixed expenses or? There's a couple ways to look at it. So one is to lay out what we call your essential expenses, you know, your housing, your health care, your groceries and utilities, and make sure that you have enough guaranteed income coming in to cover those. So if Social Security isn't enough, you could say, well, how much would I have to put in an income annuity to top off that guaranteed income stream so it covers my essential expenses? So that is one way of looking at it. Another way is through what, what we call a coverage ratio. So we look at all of your expenses in retirement and we 
zoom forward in time to usually age 72 to 75 and say, well, what portion of your total expenses are going to be covered by guaranteed income out at that point in time? The reason we do that is many people are delaying Social Security or they have pensions that may be kicking in. And so we're, we're looking out in time. That's also when cognitive decline can set in. And one of the things guaranteed income does is protect you from any future decisions you might make for yourself. It, you know, elder care fraud is something that is of great concern. And so if you have these guaranteed income streams coming in, no one can take that from you and you can't decide to do something with your money that, that doesn't make sense and, and take that away from yourself. So we look out at that point in time and say, how much of your expenses would be covered by guaranteed income? That's called a coverage ratio. We typically want to see that at 50% or more. And if it's less than 50%, then we might have a conversation around what would it take to, you know, put more money in an income annuity to top that off to, to get that ratio to 50% or higher. So one aspect of income annuities that at least the academics talk about is the feature of it having mortality credits attached to it, uh, something that no other investment really has attached. Talk about what people might need to know about the fact that income annuities have mortality credits. Yeah, so a mortality credit is simply pooling of your money with a lot of other people. And when we look at the law of large numbers, some of those people are going to live long and some aren't. And so that can allow you to get more income if you are one of the long-lived ones. And so when you look at the internal rate of return on an annuity, you can map that out over time. And the longer you live, the higher the internal rate of return that you would receive. Uh, on a, quote, investment analysis, if you were looking at it purely from an investment standpoint. That's what makes it such a unique vehicle. The longer you live, the higher your rate of return on, on that particular uh, investment choice. And so it does offer this unique set of, of protections against living long. And that is, you know, in my Dana language, how I describe mortality credits and, and how those work. Right. So it seems like if you have a long life expectancy or a planning horizon to age 95, uh, that uh, this tool could be of great use and value to you, assuming that you don't have other vehicles to manage or mitigate longevity risk. Yeah, absolutely it can. I mean, we have a financial planner in our firm whose great aunt just passed away at 107. 107, and she was going strong all the way to the end. So imagine living to 107. You would look back and be so thankful that you had bought an annuity. It would probably be the best performing asset in your portfolio. All right, Dana, once, I, once again, I've exhausted all my questions. Uh, anything we missed or bears reemphasizing? I, the only thing that bears reemphasizing is to be open-minded, to evaluate the tools objectively, and take a look and see if they might be the right tool for you.